Hi everybody. In this video, we'll connect our Bricks Builder form with MailChimp. Bricks Builder does have a built-in integration for MailChimp and SendGrid. The MailChimp one I tried out, I tried it over here. You simply connect it with the settings that are built in for this API with Bricks Builder. And unfortunately, I found myself going down a rabbit hole in Reddit, Facebook groups, forms. I simply couldn't get the damn thing to work. So after spending several hours myself and seeing others complain and give up about the same type of integration, I figured it's worth putting together a quick video that's going to show you a workaround and I actually recommend it regardless to whether this would work or not. The reason being is abstracting the connection from the built-in Bricks integration allows you to do a lot more than what the built-in mechanism would allow you even if it did work. So the built-in mechanism would give you some basic mapping details but if you remove the connection and don't use this integration you can really do whatever you want once the connection is there. So I'll close this tab out and as always we're going to be using Using make to make the connection happen. Make is an alternative to a platform like Zapier. I like to use it for automation and these type of connections. And what we're really going to do here is just spin up a webhook. And this webhook is going to receive some data. So I'll go ahead and get started right away here. We'll rename this to be YouTube MailChimp webhook tutorial. I'm going to delete this after, but you should name this something that you'll be able to recognize down the road when you come back here under webhooks and connections. So I'll go ahead and hit save. And now I have here an address that we can send data to. So I'll go ahead and copy this and close this out. And let's go to our form. This is the form we're going to be using. It's for now just accepting a name and an email. And over here, I'm going to delete this out because we don't want to use this anymore and save. So that way my bricks builder has has no API saved in it. And as you see here, MailChimp, it's empty. So I'll close this tab out as well. Go back to my form here. Now, in order to make the connection happen with a webhook, Bricks doesn't have this built in out the box. So I am going to be using a plugin called Light that we have developed internally. It also provides you ACSS themes and a few other integrations that you can work with. But most importantly, it provides to you webhooks that Bricks doesn't have out the box. You don't have to use this. I do have another tutorial Tutorial, which I will plug into this video that tells you how to put together webhooks without using a plugin at all. So if you'd like to go that route, I'll make sure to plug that video in the description below and somewhere on the screen here. So I will close this light out. I've already installed it. I just wanted you all to be aware of it. That's how I'm able to go into this form and under actions, select webhook. And after selecting webhook, it's going to show me here the webhook settings. It's one simple field that I can paste my webhook URL that I got from from make right here. So I will go ahead and hit save. And once that's saved, we should be able to receive this data at the webhook side. So let me go ahead and run this scenario once. And here we have the form ready to roll. So I will just refresh here quickly. And now that I've refreshed, I will go ahead and put some details into here. So I'll just do test at gmail.com and hit send. I just want to see that the webhook is indeed receiving data. So there it is. This is the bundle that we got from the test that we just ran. That's the form ID. This is the name that I fed it. And this is the email that I gave it. So that seems to be working fine. The next step that we want to do is to integrate with MailChimp. So I will go ahead and add another module here and search for MailChimp select it and we will need to create a new connection and when i say that the next action i want to do is add or update a subscriber it's going to show me here that i need to add a connection so i'll go ahead and add a new connection and i'll call this again youtube tutorial and hit save and now it's opened another window for me so i'll get out of the full screen here and just show you what it's doing here this is the window that it popped up i will go ahead and use the information i just created and now it's going to ask me if I'm sure that I want to authorize this. I'll go ahead and hit allow. And once that's done, the MailChimp and make connection is going to be completed. And so there it is. Okay, so now we just need to map the details and pass over the information properly. So under the list ID, I will go ahead and select select from the list. I don't want to have to put the ID manually since I don't remember or want to bother with it. And once you select from the list, it'll suggest to you the list that you have available that you created over here. So by default, it's just giving me the one list that I created. And now it's showing me the possible fields that I can map with this specific 
specific list. So these options are there by default. I actually didn't add this. It just came with the MailChimp account when I installed it. And the one specific important field here is the email address that we want to have subscribed. So that's going to be right there. And for newsletter, if I had multiple newsletters and groups, I could choose that here. For now, I don't. For the name, we could add this since we're getting it from here. But in my setup, I have it so that the form asks for a full name. So you would need to work some magic here in order to split it between the first and last name. But we'll just pretend that this is a first name for now. And that's it. You should be ready to go. If it says subscribe here, you have the email field and the name. We are good. So I'll go ahead and click on OK. Make sure to save the scenario. Once you have it saved, hit run once. So that way the webhook is active and listening. I'll go back here as always. Refresh the page quickly. So we're on the latest and greatest. And in here, let's go ahead and put whatever name. And for the email, I'll write testing email at Gmail. Com. So we'll go ahead and hit send. So with this success message, we should be able to check now MailChimp and see that under our audience and all contacts, we do have the email that we just provided. And it says that the source is Integromat, which is the original name for Make. Integromat acquired Make years back. And for some reason, some of their integrations have not been changed yet. So this is indeed us and everything seems to be working. And just so that we can test this once more, I'm going to go over here and refresh the page. And over here, I will turn this on. So now it's waiting for a new one. We'll just run this test once more. So I'll say Bob and then Bob builder at gmail.com and hit send. I just want to see that this is indeed working and everything is okay here. So it did run through. So we can click on this magnifying glass to see the event that was received. And this is the bundle that we're working with. And you can see what URL it's coming from. And we can also look into here to see what it actually passed along from the original bundle that it was working with. And so you can see here everything that it's doing. So this is the information that was passed into MailChimp in the scenario. And if we go over here again, just to again, double check here, we do see that the name that we just added Bob with Bob dash builder at gmail.com is indeed appearing. Now, again, the beauty of working with something like this is that we can take this to many different directions where with bricks builder, after this scenario completed and the email was provided, that's done. And the flow is built in and we can't do much. Where with Make over here, we can add here a few more modules and go in different routes. We can add a Slack notification so that we get a notification about a subscriber that just joined, or we can send out an email with the Gmail module saying, hey, we just saw that you subscribed. Thank you so much. We can do various actions like that. The modules here are endless and you can take this in whatever direction direction you would like. So that's about it. That brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions, please drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you'd like to support the channel, the best way to do so is to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you all for watching and happy building.